Half of the world exists at night. It's, it's, it's really peaceful, like it can be scary, but it's right, for me, it's right on the other side of scary, where it's like a little uncomfortable, but in a, an exciting way. Even if all you're exploring is like your backyard. Well, hey, Nikki, let's go in here because I want to show you some really nice looking bats that you'll recognize right away. Oh, okay. Who do you have in here? Well, I have the silver hair Cleopatra. Uh, yay! And then Peggy and Sue. <laughs> so I would consider myself an informal educator in bat conservation. I love to go out and teach other people about bats on any scale that they want to talk about bats. Would you expect her to live? Probably outlive me. <laughs> when we think about bats, we think about one thing, and it comes from movies, it comes from Halloween, it comes from that like black bat in the sky that lives in a cave, where bats are these things that are like, you know, related to vampires and are associated with, you know, scary places and graveyards or are gonna fly into your hair or, you know, suck your blood. If we don't replace that with like actual education about bats, about real bats, about their real story, then those things just kind of perpetuate and they lead to these fears that people don't need to have. If we lose them, we're really going to lose out on some really important things. So Washington's interesting. We have 14 or 15 species, and so the little brown bats are one of our most common urban species here in Washington. That's been one of the species hardest hit by white nose syndrome, um, which is a fungus that was found in the eastern United States in 2006. It can take out up to 100% of a colony over a winter. So federally, the little brown bat is under consideration for the Endangered Species Act. We found that people who who do care, who have empathy for a species, are much more likely to act to benefit that species. And so we were kind of thinking about like how we could facilitate that. Right now, I am going to make tostadas de chapulines, which means grasshoppers. People all over the world eat insects. And today, we're going to give people a chance to do the same, um, inspired by the bats we hope to see tonight. I never saw myself as a bat chef, um, but I have been intrigued by bats my whole life, and I'm really excited to have this food bonding experience. <laughs> okay. I have one in my mouth. Yeah, me too. Um, my mom's I think I felt the legs. Well, there's a bat night! So I'm going to do a really kind of quick Bats 101. We're going to talk about what bats are all about, what our local bats are about. Bats live between 20 and 40 years, which is the longest of any animal on Earth for their size. There are over 1,450 different species of bats in the world. They are incredibly diverse. And there are bats on every continent except Antarctica. They live in every habitat and every ecosystem except our coldest, highest elevation ar arid places. And they're just as diverse as our species of birds are. So our smallest bat in the world is called a kitty's hognose bat. Um, it is also affectionately called the bumblebee bat because it is literally, its body is the size of my thumb. Here in the United States, we have our bug-eating bats who protect us from our mosquitoes and blood-borne pathogens, who protect our crops and our gardens and our food sources from beetles and moths that would destroy them. So we're a big fan of that. Observation. 
Oh, there he is. There, you see him? Yeah. yeah. That's a good sized bat. I bet that's a big brown bat. Yeah. It just flew right over us. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. Cute. That's a great one. It is fun to kind of like see people's reactions and I hope it's because they understand them better. Now they'll go out and they'll recognize bats when they see them flying around next summer and they'll tell the person they're out with. And that person can have an experience seeing a bat for, for maybe the first time or recognizing that they're here. And just get them to be a little bit more of a familiar sighting, um, something that isn't so scary or so distant, um, but an actual part of our neighborhoods. Thank you.